Hello, um, welcome for this uh, second office hour for Google Summer of Code. Um, it is today, the 10th of February, uh, two o'clock UTC. And we'll try to, I uh, will make the, the most, uh, the most to finish on time. We failed to start on time because we had some uh, link issues and needed to set up a few things, but we'll finish by respect for everybody uh, on time in uh, half an hour. There's a first meeting on uh, this time zone, uh, and it will thus be a quite open uh, discussion. So we have uh, around the table here um, uh, several uh, mentors. Uh, I am the org admin for the Google Summer of Code for Jenkins, supervising the, the general uh, process and uh, making it all work together. The purpose of this meeting is to be able to meet the mentors, ask whatever questions, clarifications uh, you have, and bring whatever uh, topic uh, you want clarifications uh, on. So first, a little presentation. We first have Mark Waite, who is uh, uh, joining in from the west of the United States, so very early bird. We have, and he's mentor for several proposed projects. We have uh, Diraj, who is also mentor, I believe. And he's joining in from the Indian time zone. And we have Chris, who is also um, a, a mentor and part uh, of the org admin team uh, and he's located in the Chinese uh, time zone. I am located in Brussels, Belgium, so the middle of uh, Europe between the United States and uh, Asia. So we had a propose, uh, an agenda proposal here. So before we start digging into the things I have, a uh, very general question is, do you have general questions, doubts, clarifications, or comments uh, to do? Don't hesitate to open your mic and uh, we hear between friends. So let's go. I think it's quite impressive to talk like that. So maybe the questions will uh, appear uh, afterwards. A uh, general suggestion before we start is I recommend that you listen to the recording of the Pacific um, uh, or Asia um, uh, office hour that we hold uh, in the middle of the night for Europe. Uh, there are also very interesting uh, things that are uh, uh, shared uh, there. So we, we try to, to share the knowledge uh, transfer on, on both uh, channels. Don't hesitate to listen uh, to that. In the notes of the previous meeting, we added also here some useful links and uh, 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 information. Don't forget to look at them and uh, uh, um, get ideas and uh, probably also questions uh, uh, coming from the reading of these documents. So do we have a question? I see that Diraj is uh, saying, so can we also discuss here the project that haven't been selected yet, but are under uh, discussion for now? The short answer is yes, we can discuss that. The longer uh, question is, will uh, I, I'm following this project quite closely and it's a project that is near to my heart on that. So I'm able to answer uh, to that uh, subject, Raj. Well, and, and it may be worth clarifying that there may be a misperception there that it's worth noting the 
a project has not been selected. What happens is candidates submit their proposals for the project. So there are all of these projects are possible ideas that you might choose as a potential contributor to submit as your proposal. And what you do is you have to turn our idea into a real proposal. And converting our idea into a real proposal means creating a plan for it and what the steps you think would be and how it will work. So there are many, many steps to get from any one of these ideas to, to a real proposal that is your proposal. Yeah. John Mark, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. It just for me that that's oh. one of those. It's not a simple any contributor picks up a project idea and it's ready to go. The idea with Google Summer of Code is each person who is submitting their application brings their proposal and outlines it. They they've thought about what steps should be taken, which changes should be made. They've got they've done some experiments themselves, and then they bring a project proposal that is their own proposal. Yeah, very very true and and very to the point. It's it's a two way process. It started by the mentors who started to describe a project idea, and uh, the participants or contributors uh, uh, can uh, uh, provide additional ideas, questions, or or it's it's a work that we do together. Uh, especially once you uh, have shown your interest or or get interested to one or the other topic. Uh, then you, we can start the process of uh, discussing with uh, the mentors or in the, in the project group uh, where several communication channels are set up, uh, uh, where uh, you, can, you can have a, a mailing list. A Gitter is generally the easiest way uh, to interact with, uh, with the project teams or participants being mentors uh, and so on. So don't hesitate to propose ideas or, or say, well, this could be, this is how I understand the task. This is how I would, uh, I would propose that at the, as an addition. So uh, a very good point, uh, Mark. Um, any other general question about methodology or? Uh... Oh. Yes, yeah, since since Diraj asked for that topic first, I'd say let's let's spend some time on that one already, John Mark. I think you can you can give some uh, overview. It's not been discussed before in any other session, so this would be a good thing to have recorded. As these are the concepts here, the ideas, etc. Right. Okay. So first thing, I tend to be enthusiastic. So please, this is not a sales pitch. So I'm not selling the project. This is really, said, this, this is a sales pitch, and we, John Mark, is trying to sell you on why his choice is the best well, project. I, idea. At least mine will be when I talk about my ideas. Okay, uh, uh, let's uh, here. Let's do it uh, in an honest way. So the the health uh, score idea is that I've, I've been uh, working with uh, Jenkins administrators and being uh, have been in that duty uh, uh, for a, a while. And when you want to install a plugin, you need to do that judgment that's it. What is the quality of the, the plugin? What is the kind of risk that I take? Uh, is it a well-maintained plugin? Is it trustworthy uh, or will it tear down my my Jenkins uh, uh, instance because it has a memory leak or or whatever so there is all this reflection what makes a good plugin or not and uh, it's also a guideline for plugin maintainer uh, meaning that well here here are the things to watch this is a well kept plugin and this is a plugin like a garden that you didn't tend correctly and you have wild, uh, wild grasses uh, uh, all over the place. And, and so uh, it's also a hint for plugin maintainers what needs to be uh, done. 
Uh, there are several ideas and some work being done on trying to qualify what is a good plugin. And, and this is a, a very interesting uh, uh, subject to think uh, about. And we're very interested to hear the opinions uh, of uh, uh, participants uh, to that. So there is this work. Another very important work is, let's say that we decide that this is a measurable, automatic, that you can automate criteria that shows that the plugin is uh, a good quality and you can use it uh, without uh, uh, too much uh, worries. Uh, so these criteria, we want to try them out. So uh, there is, so, so we want to try out some proof of concepts. How do you automate the validation? Uh, how can you automate, uh, for instance, are, uh, are the, the, the dependencies maintained and up to date? Uh, how many open issues are, are uh, opened? And we want to run these probes on the, the 1,800 plus plugins that we have so that we see what is the general distribution uh, on the plugin herd uh, that we have to see. Is this criteria good and where are we going to put uh, the, the levels? So summarize first, what do we want to measure? Then we need to do some uh, POCs and further, of implementing these probes. And then the, the third step is we need to think, how are we going to propose uh, these results to the public? Uh, how are we going to uh, uh, modify? Uh, because the, the, we, we tend to go in the direction of uh, providing this information uh, on uh, the, the plugin update site. Uh, and, and what will be the most efficient way to present these information in a useful, uh, useful way. So this is for administrator. And then you have also how to show these results to maintainers so that they also see, well, okay, I should maybe do some house cleaning there and do some maintenance uh, uh, on that. Thank you. So to summarize, three main axes and three main work topics where there are small items uh, that we can work. So it's not a huge, huge thing that we'll do as a monolith. The first one is work on probes to define the probes and, and validate and describe them. Testing the probes and observing what is the statistical distribution of those probes, and so that we verify that the initial assumptions are correct. Third work uh, domain is presenting uh, the results of that. So it's a very complete project. There is some preparation work to be done. There are some quick, short-lived works items that can grow into uh, uh, complete probes. And then there is also the display. So I believe it's a very rich project where there's a lot to be done and where you're not standing in front of a big mountain and say, where am I going to start uh, with it? So Mark, was that a good summary of it? <laughs> I think that was great. Very good, yes. Now, now I, I think we should ask a question now to Diraj. Diraj, did that, did John Mark's answers Pitch. cause you to have any additional questions? Yes. So thanks a lot for this really, really great description because you explained with the help of examples as well. So that puts things into picture. And uh, so the three steps you mentioned as documented by Mark as well, uh, I have a question about uh, what are the attributes of a well-maintained plugin? That is the first one, like which attributes do we want to... Uh... Keep going, Diraj. Well, uh, he's... Yeah, so... Diraj has background noise. Uh... Okay, go ahead, Diraj. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the question is, uh, 
for the attributes, I was uh, thinking that uh, maybe I, we can refer the contributing to the open source document by Mark. So is it a good place to look for these attributes in order to determine the uh, well-maintained plugin? I think that's one, one valid source. It's certainly not the only valid source, but it is, it is a valid source of, of some data points we might consider. John Mark, your comments? Yeah, uh, indeed. So there, there are various data sources. There's also some work uh, uh, a couple of people have already started. I think it's important that we start consolidating that in, and uh, get the various sources uh, uh, together. Uh, uh, and, and because it's part of, of the things I, I like, I would like to use that in order uh, that we start explaining and writing uh, some documents to help the people. But it's not just saying, well, this is not achieved or this is under uh, the expected level, but how do you get there? How, how can you uh, do that? So there, there are multiple fa uh, facets to it. Come back to your, your comment, uh, uh, Diraj, there are multiple sources contributing to open source is, is one. Uh, it's the modernization uh, workshop too. There's a lot of very important insight. Uh, uh, in there. Good point, Raj. And there may also be other hints in things like the Jenkins Health Advisor from CloudBees has some has some interesting pointers in it. Um, conversations in the Jenkins Developer mailing list. Uh, many other locations where we could find hints about uh, what what could or could not be done. Are there, yes. Drash, do, do you have other questions or is somebody else in the audience having uh, questions or interest in, in this? I do have some questions, but I don't think this would be the right place because um, my questions are more into the implementation part of it. So I think I'd be, it would be better to ask it on Kita channel. Uh, yeah, and, and as, well. as I see, there's a lot of interest, especially from you, Raj, and we try to get a few other participants in there. We need to get to get the pot cooking and brewing and the, the ideas start to come and, and we'll, we'll work uh, uh, together on that one. But I see that uh, at least you and probably other people start to see where we are. They, it's, it's very interesting because you can participants can have an impact on uh, on on that and, and contribute even small pieces but uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, a project and that would really help the community to improve and better uh, use in a better way uh, Jenkins so this said mark because uh, we're going to run out of time so I, this was what I feared that I, I would get a, a little bit too enthusiastic about that subject, but it was worthwhile giving the idea. So are there other subjects um, where uh, during the last session, there were quite some answers given uh, to the automatic spe specification generator for the REST API? This is one that I would like to move ahead because I've been struggling with REST documentation. So I really would like, so I, if you're interested in that project, listen to the recording of last week. Uh, uh, Chris gave some good answers and explanations about the Jenkins file runner. Uh, so as Chris is on the call, if somebody has questions on that subject, Please go ahead. So I, one of the things that we didn't get to in the last call was we didn't get to plug in health score. You've reviewed that. We also didn't get to Git cache management. And I was going to shamelessly ask if you'd be willing to let me spend a few minutes, John Mark, on the Git cache management topic. Chris has very nicely put the hyperlink there. And if you'll just click that hyperlink, 
if you're if you're willing to let me spend some time on that project idea. Yeah. Go ahead. So I if, if you could if you could make this make the text bigger for us. My eyes don't read that well. Yeah. So I the work with um, I'm used to control plus being usually yeah, the thing but that, with the screen sharing it doesn't work. Oh okay, that's all right. It'll be fine as uh, is. No I, no worry. I'll use perfect that. Oops, are you still there? We are, yes, thanks. And okay, that's perfect. Because that's great size. I had a I had a power failure. I hear the alarms in the neighborhood oh, going dear. on. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd less cost you. Okay, Mark, go ahead. So so Jenkins, one of its primary roles is to check out source code from repositories and get that source code then to be operated on by build processes, by compilation, by execution of tests. Uh, one of the things that it needs to do frequently is to use a get a copy of that repository and then it will do additional work on that repository, other copies. That means sometimes Jenkins has caches of Git repositories. And caches of Git repositories are helpful because they reduce the amount of data transfer that has to come from the central Git server to the Jenkins controller. That's a nice help. However, the, the implementers of Git did exactly the right thing in that they optimized Git for short-term operations and accepted that the user would periodically do some maintenance activities like garbage collect the repository or repack it or do other removed stale branches, remove stale tags, all operations that human beings, when they interact with their Git repository, can do pretty easily. But Jenkins as an automation server does not have a facility right now that will automatically clean up caches, cached Git repositories properly. So we've had cases where ci.jenkins.io, our, our primary Jenkins server for the Jenkins project has had slower than necessary repository caches because they hadn't been well maintained. It had been created a year ago and just continually updated and no one had ever run the maintenance operations. This project idea suggests we need a facility in Jenkins that will allow it to automatically and periodically perform cache maintenance. So that's the idea. We're almost out of time, so I think I should stop there unless there are questions from people about the idea. Great. So okay, if, you, if you'd like to learn more about it, there's a command called git maintenance that's included in recent versions of Git. And you can read the man page about Git maintenance. And you can see what it offers as techniques that are already built into command line Git to do these kinds of things. That's it for me. Thanks, John Mark. Right, okay, Mark, sorry to have pushed you a little bit, uh, trying to finish on, on, on time here. So a last uh, advice or tip I would give to everybody, think on this write down some questions and reach out to us either uh, through uh, uh, community.jenkins.io or via the Gitter uh, uh, channels. And we'll take, we'll, we're going to take particular, uh, uh, to make a particular effort to answer these questions publicly. So please avoid uh, pinging us directly as, as much as I would like to help everybody, uh, this does not serve the community. Every question is worthwhile and is useful to everybody uh, joining or contemplating to join the GSOC uh, program. So don't hesitate to ask your questions publicly. There is no shame to ask a question. Every question is, is good and will take the time. And especially I take a lot of, it. May, it's very important to me. And I want to answer that as good as I can publicly so that everybody can benefit uh, from these answers. So we're now uh, uh, at half of the hour. 
Um, thank you very much for uh, participating uh, to this call, to listen in and to the questions that have been asked. Uh, we're going to have the next meeting in this time slot that I think is good for uh, uh, India time zone. Uh, we're going to have it in two weeks. We're alternating uh, every week between what I call the Pacific or Asia uh, uh, office hour and the European Middle East Africa uh, um, office hour. Uh, so thank you very much for attending. Waiting for your questions either live or on Gitter or on uh, the discourse on uh, community Jenkins.io. Uh, uh,